Thursday, 13th week after Pentecost, Feast of Pope St. Pius X, Morning Meditation, September 3rd, 2020. Meditation taken from the Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choice as Teacher in Moral Theology. In nomina patria filii, spiritus sancti, amen. Act of faith in the presence of God. Most holy and adorable Trinity, one God in three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my Mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of Humility Litany of Humility, O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That, in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever-Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, pana dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or Penobis peccatoribus, nuca me hora mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray. Gloria Patria Filio, Spiritus Sancta, Sicud Erat in Principio, Nuca et Semper, in Secula Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thursday, 13th week after Pentecost, morning meditation, feast of Pope St. Pius X. The importance of our last end. Consider it well and say to thyself, I have a soul, and if I lose it, all is lost. I have a soul, and if I were to gain the whole world, and in the end lose that soul, what would the gaining of the world profit me then? For where are now the dignities, the pleasures, the luxuries of all those great ones of the world, whose bodies are moldering in the dust, and whose souls are a prey to the fires of hell? 
My salvation is therefore of the highest importance to me, for eternal happiness is at stake. Consider, O oh man, how important it is to you to save your soul. Your dearest interests are their concern, because if you attain salvation, you will be eternally happy in the enjoyment of every good, both of soul and body. But in losing your soul, you lose your soul and body. Heaven and God forever. You will be eternally miserable, eternally damned. Your only important, your only necessary affair, therefore, is to serve your God and to save your soul. Do not then, O Christian, think of serving your passions now and of giving yourself to God hereafter. Oh, how many has this false and deceitful hope precipitated into hell? Thousands of sinners have flattered themselves with the hope of future repentance, but the day for which they hoped never arrived, and they are now suffering without remedy. The Torments of the Damned And who amongst them all ever thought of falling into that place of woe? Which of them had not the intention of saving his soul? But God curses him that sins in the hope of pardon. You say perhaps within yourself, I will commit this sin and then repent. But are you sure that time will be allowed you for repentance? You may die the moment you have sinned. By sinning, you lose the grace of God. And what if you never more recover it? God shows mercy to those who fear him. Luke 1 50, but not to those who condemn and despise him. Think not, therefore, and that it will cost you no more to repent of and confess three sins than to repent of and confess one sin. No, in this thought you are deceived. God might pardon you a first or a second sin, but not a third. He has patience with the sinner for a time but not forever when the time comes. When the measure of iniquity is filled up, his mercy ceases, and he punishes the impenitent sinner either by death or by abandoning him to a reprobate sense, in which state he goes on from sin to sin without remorse, and at length is precipitated into hell. O Christian, attend seriously to this. It is time you should put an end to your disorders and return to God. You should fear lest this may be the last warning that he will ever send you. You have offended him long enough, and he has borne with you long enough. Tremble then, lest God should forsake you after the next mortal sin. Oh, how many souls has this striking thought of eternity caused to retire from the disorders and dangers of the world, to live in cloisters, solitudes, and deserts? Unfortunate sinner that I have been, what is the fruit of all my crimes? A conscious gnawed with despair, a troubled heart, a soul overwhelmed with grief, hell deserved and God lost. Ah, oh, my God, my heavenly Father, bind me to thy love. Consider, O oh man, that this affair of eternity is the most neglected of all affairs. Men have time to think of everything but God and salvation. If a man of the world is advised to frequent the sacraments or to spend a quarter of an hour daily in meditation, he will immediately say, I have a family to provide for. I have my business to attend to. I have quite sufficient to keep me busy. Good God, have you not a soul to save? Will your riches and your family be able to assist you at the hour of your death or deliver from hell? If you are condemned, no, no, flatter yourself not that you are able to reconcile God and the world, heaven and sin. Salvation is not to be attained by a life of indolence and ease. It is necessary to use violence and make great effort in order to obtain the crown of immortality. How many Christians have flattered themselves with the idea of serving God and saving their souls hereafter and are at this moment and will forever be in the flames of hell. How great is the folly of men in attending to what will so shortly terminate and thinking so little of that state which will never end. Ah, Christian, 
put your affairs in order. Reflect that your all is at stake. Remember that in a very short time, your body will be deposited in the earth and your soul will go to dwell in the house of eternity. How dreadful then will be your misfortune if you are condemned to an eternity of woe. Reflect well on this now. For then you shall find no remedy. Oh my God, I am forced to acknowledge with shame and confusion that I have hitherto blindly wandered astray from thee. I've scarcely ever thought seriously of saving my soul. Oh my God, my Father, save me through Jesus Christ. I am willing to part with everything here, provide I do not lose thee. O Mary, my surest hope, save me by thy powerful intercession. Chapter 6 When I was a little one, I pleased the Most High. Let us pass to consider the greatness of the fidelity with which Mary immediately corresponded to divine grace. It is not a private opinion only, says a learned author, Father Lacombriere, that it is the opinion of all that the Holy Child, when she received sanctifying grace in the womb of St. Anne, received also the perfect use of her reason, and was also divinely enlightened in a degree corresponding to the grace with which she was enriched, so that we may well believe that from the first moment of her beautiful soul was united to her most pure body, she, by the light she had received from the wisdom of God, knew well the eternal truths, the beauty of virtue, and above all, the infinite goodness of God, and how much he deserved to be loved by all, and particularly by herself, on account of the singular gifts with which he had adorned and distinguished her above all creatures by preserving her from the stain of original sin, by bestowing on her so immense graces and destining her to be the mother of the eternal word and the queen of the universe. Hence, from that first moment, Mary, grateful to God, began to do all that she could do, but immediately and faithfully trafficking with the great capital of grace which had been bestowed upon her and applying herself entirely to please and love the divine goodness. She from that moment loved God with all her strength, and continued thus to love him always, during the whole of the nine months preceding her birth, during which she never ceased for a moment to unite herself more and more closely to God by fervent acts of love. She was already free from original sin, and hence was exempt from every earthly affection, from every irregular movement, from every distraction, from every opposition on part of the senses, which could in any way have hindered her from always advancing more and more in divine love. Her senses also concurred with her blessed, blessed spirit in tending towards God. Hence, her beautiful soul, free from every impediment, never lingered, but always flew towards God, always loved him, always increased in love towards him. It was for this reason that she called herself a plane tree planted by flowing waters. Quote, as a plane tree by the waters was I exalted. Ecclesiasticus 24, verse 19. For she was that noble plant of God, which always grew close by the streams of divine grace. And therefore she also calls herself a vine. Quote, as a vine, I have brought forth a pleasant odor. Ecclesiastes 24, verse 28. Not only because she was so humble in the eyes of the world, but because she was like the vine, which, according to the common proverb, quote-unquote, never ceases to grow. Other trees, the orange tree, the mulberry, the pear tree, have a determined height which they attain. But the vine always grows, and grows to the height of the tree to which it is attached. And thus did the most blessed virgin always grow in perfection. Quote, Hail then, O vine, always growing, unquote, says St. Gregory Thamaturgus. For she was always united to God, on whom alone she depended. Hence it was of her that the Holy Ghost spoke, saying, quote, Who is this that cometh up from the desert, flowing with delights, leaning upon her beloved? Canticles 8, verse 5. 
which St. Ambrose is thus paraphrases. Quote, she it is that cometh up, clinging to the eternal word as a vine to a vine stock. Unquote. Who is this accompanied by the divine word that grows as a vine planted against a great tree? Concluding prayer. I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of all, now and until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been even until now. No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for me. Have a blessed day, O slaves of Mary.